Kind of worries me though, like... Tiny support hasn't felt amazing. Uh, let, let's be frank, right? The tiny support right now... Yes, you can still kind of blow people up with Avalanche Toss, and having the Toss backs on heroes is always going to be quite influential, but... Apart from that, the hero has felt a little bit lackluster in the in the support role, so I do get a little bit concerned for SMG in that sense. Uh, still, not to be outdone, Boom Esports now going for their mid invoker. I love seeing your parge from this hero, so it's very, very good to see it being picked up. Uh, that kind of does lock in the Monkey King as a position 4 here for Boom Esports, but I suppose that is where we've seen the Monkey King most uh, as of late, is in that position 4 role, so not to be too surprised here. I think CTM will be taking that hero for himself. And that will also reveal it is a pause one gyrocopter. So I don't think CTM's taken the uh, the gyro himself this time. I know it's still flexible, John. I know they could give Palos the Monkey King. I don't think Monkey King carries quite as amazing as it as it used to be before that that last little mini patch came out. I, I suppose the flexibility's still there, though. We'll have to wait and see. You know, you never know with Boom Esports because CTM he's a he's a bit of a mastermind when it comes to drafting, and he does tend to. To play those mental games with you. So you, you've got to be a little bit careful when you're drafting against this map. Definitely. Like, yeah, it's one of the strengths of Boom. They can always do some weird things for their draft. Same thing goes for SMG. Like, we're, we're assuming Keeper for Light mid. They could still kind of toss it around. Could still have the Moon Tiny instead. Heck, maybe you have the mid one Tiny mid. Uh, Shaker, Keeper for Light as supports. We've seen Raji actually play the Cottle as well for SMG. So it's not too off the mark. And saving their last pick, perhaps, for a moon or mid one. Again, flexing that tiny round. So there's a lot of back and forth here with how both sides are playing their draft. I think that could be key in closing out. Boom does have last pick overall, so they can kind of dictate how the flexibility goes and maybe catch SMG off guard if SMG's not careful. Uh, for Boom's part, I, I like seeing the Invoker. I think when they have the Invoker Gyro, it just leads into this really aggressive pause one. We've seen Palos itemize very differently compared to other gyro players we've seen him rush crystallis mm. more than well, it's just crystallis rush and then he has something to buff him up usually the io no io this time around but even just an early level alacrity with the attack speed and once you get your ags up as well that's, that's a lot of dps and gyrocopter you can't underestimate the early crystallis stat build up with max flak cannon it's devastating in a really big fight combine that with the control they get from the wukong's command from their monkey support and there's, there's a lot that SMG has to worry about. Sure, they have swap from Venge, but level one swap, you know, it, it's not amazingly long range. It can be hard to drag a Monkey King out if he's positioned well. So you still have to kind of watch for that big control that Boom will want to bring out here. Yeah. I think it's also important to note that for, uh, for Boom and SMG, uh, the last time they did match up, I believe Boom Esports did end up 2 owing SMG, and that was throughout the group stages. So... Not so much of a grudge match between these two, but I'm sure SMG do want to pull off the victory here and make it through to the Grand Finals themselves, as we do have a Mirana pickup from SMG's end. So, pause one, Tiny, is what we're looking at, I think, John? Yeah, it looks like it. We're going to have the Tiny for mid one coming true. We have seen pause one Tiny work out really well. You know, Echo Saber timing, Silver Edge hits really hard. Keeper of the Light on the mid lane. You have such great rotation potential from a Shaker Mirana. Like, if these two supports collapse onto the mid by, say, the four-minute mark, right around that second water rune timing, it's going to be really easy to find kills. You have so much damage, so much good control from the Shaker to line up for the arrow, to line up for the Illuminate. And that the Invoker for Yopage is not going to hold well, even if his own supports come in with a Grimstroke Monkey King. It's just not as much that you're giving there for long-range control. Maybe the Boundless can have a pretty good effect, but lining up the Inkswell, it's not going to be easy unless you put it in the Monkey King who jumps in, but it's harder way harder than just getting good fissure off so boom will have to watch mid i think that's where the emphasis for smg will come out that early aggression we tend to see from afu is likely to come out and that's just going to set the pace for smg i mean afu has been doing a certainly doing a fantastic job john i i know when we were casting team smg a few days ago they he just looks spectacular every single time he plays the earth shaker boom esports they're gonna go for a last pick night stalker fair enough uh, so that should be the offlane, arguably, here for Boom. And yeah, FBZ will take it. Uh, now the question is, do we have a support or a core mon Monkey King here? Still think it should be a position one gyrocopter. They've got the Moon Marana on mid. Oh! 
for oh. SMG. So they shake it up again. They go with the Raji Keeper's Light, which they've done a couple of times. But Marana mid against Invoker. Not something we've seen in a very long time. <laughs> not something we've seen from Moon himself as well. I'm trying to recall. I don't think we've seen the Marana mid from Moon as well recently. So... Marana mid, uh, it still works out really well. The shaker rotations still line up nicely. The timings now are a bit different. Like the aggression, the buildup of the Marana is going to be really flexible. You could still go earn. You could opt for an early Crystalis build, maybe more of a right click build. Look for the Yules for self arrow setup could still be a possibility. So what Moon wants to do for mid will really dictate how aggressive he wants to be. And think when you've got the tiny core as well, SMG has some really early spikes to play with. And that's, again, something Boom has to watch out for. With a Dryer Copter, it's a bit slower going. You know, you still want to get some farm up. Same thing goes for Invoker. As we've seen, Yopaj prioritize. Even without setup, he still prioritizes that Ags after the urn. So it's a bit slower in terms of item spikes for Boom. And that's something SMG will look to abuse. Going to ask you the hard question, Jonathan. Before we get into this game one, between these two drafts, which one do you think is superior? Which one do you at least favor going into this game one? Ooh, I'd actually say I, I like SMG's draft a lot more. There are some answers for, say, the Cottle here with the last pick Night Stalker coming true from Boom. I don't think it's a massive issue when your Keeper of Light is a support. So it's not as pertinent for that Cottle to stay alive, to get the damage off, and just constantly, you know, spam the Illuminate. It's still going to be key, but if you're cut off by a Night Stalker, it's not as scary. The key thing is the timings. Mirana's mid comes online super quick. Tiny as a pause one, just hits that Echo Saber Silver Edge timing. And we know how mid one plays on his pause one. He almost always takes that more active position for Moon to actually play a little bit odder. And with two active heroes, that lines up really well uh, with the power spikes they're looking for in SMG side. Oh, Moon, you already see him in the mid lane, John, just trying to scout out what's going on here. There was a bit of a smoke already up from Boom Esports. In fact, they are still going. They might run right into Afuhi, who doesn't see them yet, and Palos. Will indeed run into him, but won't have... Actually had the homing missile, just opts not to throw it out. 30 seconds to battle. So SMG, back on their end of things. Looks like Boom will kind of sit around. Yeah, you've got Tim's on that Monkey King currently scouting out for his team. Let's put out Arfu and KP. And I suppose they could still try to force a fight. They do have that info that KP's around, maybe looking to snipe that bounty rune. SMG. Group up as four. Make sure they are able to snag it. And you know, it looks like there's not going to be any competition anyway. Tim's, he'll just sit in the tree line. Just relax. We'll allow SMG to, to take both bounty runes on the top side. And while we're around here, we may as well talk about the top lane, John. You've got Arf on that signature Earthshaker. KP's there on the Venge. We're already seeing some very early blocks coming out with the Fisher. However, one cheeky, uh, one cheeky melee creeps decided to, to make its way out of the Fisher. But they've still got some very nice body blocks here to, to make sure that Arfu can go for a secondary Fisher if he so wishes. Yeah, and just holding back in that lane is going to be important because Afu's presence on the Shaker up against Tim's and Palos on the Gyrocopter Monkey, it's not going to be particularly amazing. You know, not one issue with Shaker doesn't do much in lane. The key thing for Afu is just ride slow, wait for his level 2 and go mid. Yeah. Very aggressive little primal spling there from, uh, from Tim's, but Afu is out with the block. Speaking of the mid lane, of course, Moon there against Yopaj. Moon on that Murana, which we haven't gotten to see very much of ourselves, against another signature hero here of Yopaj on the Invoker. John, how does this lane match up? Like, does the Murana beat out Invoker here? I really don't get to see this match up enough to know. I, I don't think the Murana necessarily mins out uh, here, Mike. I, I think Yopaj will still have a really good time on the Invoker. He has a lot of regen on hand with Quas Wex. Key thing for Yopaj, as we tend to see from his Invoker, is earn timing, and then depending on how the state of the game is, the Ags timing, right? Like, that's something we've seen constantly from Yopaj. Just earn into Spirit Vessel, hitting Ags. Uh, Moon, for him, it's just about clearing the creep wave with the Star Storm and being aggressive with Leap. Once he closes that gap, gets good right clicks off, the Invoker can melt early on with just, you know, one or two levels on his orbs. Not enough region to last through the damage from that Marana. Kind of interesting as well. You, you tend to underestimate the uh, the right-click damage of the Marana, but even with just those two slippers of agility, he's already hitting so darn hard. And your Page needs to be really careful because there might be a Leap Star Fall coming very soon from Moon. So he's looking around. Your Page already knows this, of course. Just chilling back, making sure he does not get caught out. 
It'll be okay for now. Of course, down the bot lane, FBZ on that Night Stalker with CTM on the Grimstroke, along with Roggy and Mid One on that Keeper of the Light, and of course, the Pos One Tiny. I do love myself a Pos One Tiny, John. We've been talking about it quite a lot just in the background. You think it pans out well in this matchup? I think it does. It's hard for FBZ to completely zone him out. Of course, it's also hard to zone FBZ out on the Night Stalker. So, for Boom's part, FBZ should still be able to hit his timing, start to set the pace for the team, as we tend to see him do from the off lane. You know, hit level 6, look for the first night time, line up for some aggression mid, as you'd want to see, to kind of slow down that Mirana and give Yopaj more of a game. You have to really be aware of the damage output of Raji and Midwinder. With Keeper of the Light to support the Tiny, with a Chakra Magic on hand, your Tiny's not going to run into the issue where he's out of mana. With his Avalanche Toss, although that's not prioritized on the pause one Tiny, he's still going to have a good amount of mana in the pocket to just look for that nuke play if he wants to, and it's already causing some issues for Boom in lane. You're seeing mid one up there in CS. In fact, all the heroes of SMG are occupying the top three in CS. Boom just not able to really find that foothold to be aggressive to stop that initial farm. Interesting to note as well, John. You have a look at the uh, the queued up items here for mid one. In fact, hold that thought because they are going to make a bit of a dive in with the stroke of fate. FBZ though now going to get jump with the avalanche, and well, it looks like there isn't going to be much of a kill flying out anyway. Just a substantial amount of damage here onto FBZ and mid one. But going back to the point I was trying to make, John, the uh, the early Midas pickup is what's been queued up here by mid one. Can't say I've seen that very often in the pos one tinies as of late. Do do you agree with that itemization? I actually do. I, th I think Tiny is one of the weird heroes where a Midas can make sense because you want levels up, you want farm, and you make really good use of the attack speed, right? Like, because of Grow, your attack speed doesn't feel great, but the Midas offsets that in a really good way while still providing you that golden flux. So, as long as Midwin's not punished, and he really isn't, the timing on that's going to be early and his farm will just keep building up. That's very true. So yet to find a kill across the map here for either side. Both teams just kind of biding their time to, to hit some creeps. John, if I may, while we have a bit of a down period, you were mentioning to me before the game started that apparently the idol himself has had a few <laughs> local sponsorship, sponsorships going on. Do you want to talk about that for a sec? Yeah, you know, Japoy on his Facebook page, he started getting tags from local businesses here in Davo. You know, a burger <laughs> joint tagged him up. It's like, thank you to our idol, Yopaj for eating our burgers and it's a picture of him with this gigantic burger absolutely meaty and scrumptious and you know he's having all that free stuff and i couldn't help but ask where's my stuff you know, where, where, where are my free burgers Chipoy? well Why I, you I, was, giving me some? I was about to ask you when your next sponsorship was john i i haven't heard of any sponsorships coming out for you they, they don't love <laughs> you locally no, they really don't, but Yopaj, of course, very well loved, and he's really taking control of that mid lane. Really nice play there. He did manage to force the Fortify while the Starfall was coming through for Moon, just denying a bit of that instant farm and the creep wave, and just trying to get as much as he can. But Moon, it's still a Mirana. You still have Arrow to clear out the Siege Creep. You can still clear out the, the waves really fast with Star Storm. Does have his bottle empty now. But you can still see Moon taking really good control of that lane. Top lane, Tims. Aggressive Prime will spring in. KP, he'll be the target. With the balance strike out, they might have enough with the homing missile to follow up. Ooh. Afu, he'll try to hold them back, but it won't be enough. Tims able start. to secure first blood on the Monkey King. You know, I'm just a bit surprised that Afu is still stuck top. And we were talking about his Earthshaker going down mid, looking for the Fissure blocks, setting up for arrows. No rotation yet for Messenger. They've been happy to just hold their lanes, and I think that might be setting them back a bit. Like, Shaker, Venge is a double stun lane, but against something ranged like the Gyrocopter, against something highly mobile like the Monkey King, it just doesn't line up for that aggression we're used to seeing from Afu. Oh, top lane. Palos, he's being jumped again. The force the rotation in from Tims with the Boundless Strike. Make sure they can't keep going. In fact, now the turnaround. Palos, get a cheeky homing missile out. Afu, I think he should be just fine, but Tims, keep going with the Primal Spring. Still, the stun is out from KB. Tims, he might be the first one to drop. Afu, he'll still be chased down, however. CTM, he does land the Ink Swell, and in the end, they will trade one for one. Yeah, they, they, they're constantly forcing the aggression up top in SMG. They, they realize that team, Tims wasn't around. He did check on the mid lane, but even with the double stuns, 
a gyrocopter this far ahead, a gyrocopter with all this damage and protection with the range he has, it's hard to gap close on a Shaker Bench, right? Like, your damage output's decent enough with level 3 Wave of Terror up now, but it's not enough to rip through the Jar. And I'm worried about seeing the Jar get off to the start, because Palos, he went for that max flak build, and once the farm gets rolling, once those stacks are cleared out, you really have to contest them on the SMG side to prevent that flash farm. Well, we just saw Roggy trying to contest them very early on, Johnny. He was in the uh, the Dire Triangle trying to trying to take out the stacks in that large camp with the Illuminate. Uh, naturally, Yopage was there to save the day. Uh, that is certainly something SMG will have to be very wary of this game as... Well, now they have the information they need. They've got the knowledge. It's just about what they can do about it. And for now, they'll have to sit back and relax. Uh, Palos, he's not really ready yet anyway to go for those stacks yet, but... He is getting very close, John, and it's kind of like you mentioned during the draft phase. He is already building up towards that early chrysalis timing. He should have it up relatively soon. As we do see a bit of a mid-rotation coming out against Yopage, but only the Fisher really landed. They did not get the follow-up arrow, so our Invoker is able to walk out scot-free. I think it's just an issue of timing. We're eight minutes in. That's off his first actual mid-rotation. It, it feels a bit late compared to the usual SMG games. They, they didn't really manage to get the progression they want. They will try for a smoke play though. Afu and Moon are smoked up. They've got level 8 on Moon. No value point yet in the Moonlight. But if they find a good angle, it could be a really easy way to get a nice arrow kill coming for Moon. And they just may. They're looking for someone around that tier 1 top tower, however. And unfortunately for them, nobody is there. So maybe Boom Esports already reading the movement as Moon has disappeared out of that mid lane. And it's kind of the thing with the Marana pick in that mid lane is if it's not hitting creeps, it's very, very likely it's out trying to gank somebody. It's kind of what the hero just does. It's not really one of those heroes known for jungling per se, unless you count the arrow, but even then it's... Uh, until you have a decent kind of farming item, you're not really going to be sitting in the jungle too much as a Marana. Rotations now. Well, they are going to come through the top lane. Just make sure that tier 1 doesn't drop too quickly. In fact, they might try to go for a kill as KB. Let's get Taunt caught out, but a very nice fish is there from Arfu. Still KB. He's not going to be too safe yet. He'll try to run, but in the end, they will have the damage. But can they turn around? FBZ. He's going to back out. Yapage, he'll go into the Ghost Walk, but Arfu does have the dust up. They've got the vision on the Invoker, but FBZ still scouting out. It's now the Primal Spring. Tims, he'll jump back in onto Roji. They'll try to go for the Keeper, but they've already found that Invoker as well. So a pretty decent trade already is now SMG. They can keep going, but FBZ, he's got a massive ink swell going with the Dark Ascension. He's going to jump in, grab the Marana kill, and they might even be able to secure mid one. In fact, mid one, he'll try to turn and find even more kills for his team. But Tims, he's going to jump back in, pumps out the Avalanche. Magic Missile, not going to be there. Now, the Wave of Terror didn't actually scout out the Monkey King. KP was out of range anyway. Pretty damn nice team fight there for Boom Esports, as I believe they've got something like a 1 for 4, 2 for 4 trade. Yeah, they, they play that on edge from Boom's side. I have no clue how Tim survived that. At some point, he was at 30 HP jumping around the tree lane. He jumped back in and still left. So the punishment not quite coming through from SMG. On the bright side for SMG, they will be able to find that top tier 1. And mid 1 does have the Midas up. So it's a really early Midas timing. He did rush it and went for that first before Brown Boots. You can see how that attack speed on the Midas does help. Like It, it offsets the Grow's uh, attack speed reduction in a good way. So mid 1 can still get some right click damage off. It's a trade off between that and the... Uh, and the sword, right? Like the Echo Saber. You don't have that instant double attack. You don't have that uh, inst that slight slow coming through, but you have a consistent attack speed buff that does feel great for the core tiny. We've just got to see if mid one can keep up the farming pace compared to the gyrocopter. That's the one thing as well with Midas, because you, you can flash farm like the gyrocopter. The gyro will still generally farm faster than you, and the Midas kind of kind of fixes that issue for you. So so far looking good for mid one, number one in that worth right now. Palos hasn't quite been able to clear out just yet. He does have a massive ancient stack that he could go for after this bot tier one. Oh, food. No, it's not going to be good enough timing. That Moonlight Shadow just barely not giving the invis fast enough here to escape the death that was coming from CTM and Yopage. 
It's a nice little pick up there onto the Earthshaker. You've still got SMG hanging around as two here. Arrow is going to land on CTM and they might still get something for their trouble, but not quite yet. CTM, he's going to run out as now they've got Moon down. Soulbind is there to lock them in and with the Primal Spring out, Tims, he'll clean up with the Opage. In fact, they'll find another. That's really unfortunate for, uh, for SMG, Chon. It is so close to at least getting CTM, but not quite enough. And this is an outrageous start for Boom already, Mike. 2 to 10 at the 12 minute mark. Not much of a net relief. Just 1k, but the kill board is lining up. The aggression's coming through from Boom. Look at FPC, just lining up top. Oh, KP. It's been caught out another time as the Dark Ascension ends. So you wouldn't really expect that gank to be coming in if you were KP, but. Well, FBZ just kind of all over the place right now. Oh, even in the mid lane, you can already see Tim setting up on the Monkey King right behind our foot. He's got the information to make sure his team knows that Earthshaker is right behind mid one. And now the rest of the team can slowly move their way in as there's a Boundless Strike and a Primal Spring. It's not going to amount to much though. It's kind of revealing where Tim's was. And boom, I mean, it's like you said, 2 to 11. 2k net worth lead right now. Just everything going quite swimmingly for them. It really is, Mike. I, I gotta say, Tim's is level 9 in the Monkey King. Compared to Afu on his pause for Shaker, he's at like level 7. That's a huge level disparity on the supports. It just shows you the difference with a support on the 4 that doesn't need items, that doesn't really need much excites. EXP can really contribute to the map. Whereas the Shaker is more greedy, it needs a blink. Needs more to really get going with the uh, combinations with the Echo Slam, and that's still a ways off for that hero. You've got a great power spike right now as well, John. In fact, mid lane, Soulbind is there. FBZ, he's perfectly fine. As now the Ink Swell's gonna land on both with the Sun Strike out onto mid one. It doesn't do enough damage though. So mid one, he's gonna be just fine to walk his way out, but now a oh. tornado is there. You're part of the setup into the EMP swap. It's not gonna be enough. KP will drop an Arfu. He's gonna try and run. But Tim's has got the dust out, he's got the Wukong's command, and he'll claim the kill for himself. Just absolute devastation from Boom. In fact, they might even find another. Mid one. Just barely get himself out, but Tim's really just all over. Trying to get every pick off he can for the side of Boom. Radiant's middle tower is under yeah, attack. It's it's just look constant aggression. The Opash doesn't even rest looking for more. No, absolutely not. With the Spirit Vessel up, you just get some free charges for yourself. You get a free kill. And boom. I mean, they, they might just find another KP. I don't know if you can TP there, sir. He's going to try anyway, but he's right into the heart of the beast. It's mid one. Does at least find FBC. Moon. He's out of, he's out of danger for now, but Palos, he's cleaned up KP. So it does seem a, a little bit favorable here for SMG with that last trade. So at least you've got FBZ who's a bit more, bit more rich or wealthy than say KP right now. They should be just happy with that. They're, they're, they're just hitting these really early spikes from Boom. And for SMG, Mike, we talked about how aggressive a Tiny and Marana is as a duo. Right, they have early power spikes. They do need a couple of items before there. And Moon does have just the Dragon Lance. He's going for the Ags build up. So the Sacred Arrow will have that extra damage output with the AoE Star Storm. Still a ways off. I think that's a big issue for SMG right now. They're not hitting their item spikes in the way they wanted to. And boom, they, they have already done so. Like the Spirit Vessel is enough for Yopaj. FBZ just really needed levels on the Night Stalker. They're looking for the smoke play. They're ready to go again. They don't have long cooldowns to wait for. And SMG just has to be cautious. And it's all off the back of Tim's. Like, he just keeps scouting out for his team. And I realize that's what a, mink, a Monkey King is meant to do anyway. But Tim's has just been all over. He's gotten so much information for his team. And it just feels like SMG. They're under surveillance every single time. As KP gets caught out now. They, they just can't escape the, the vision of Tim's. Who TP's mid now to almost set up on some move. Balance strike out. He's got the Echo Saber up. So he can actually kind of fight with his team. Time to move. And you saw Moon, he just has to run. He can't actually man fight against the Monkey King at the moment. No, he really can't, Mike, because Tim's is about to hit 12 and Moon is still 11 and a half. Oh. Tim's is at the point where he's probably got slightly more EXP than Yopaj and Yopaj is still saving for a Midas. That's how active this Monkey King's been. Tim's has just been on fire from the lane onwards, just really doing what you'd want. It's a perfect Monkey King game for him. Oh, look at this. 
Look at it, John. He, he's scanning out the moonlight. He's in the, he's always in the right position. Mid one. He's right next to him right now. Now we'll scout him out as the jump was there. But you, you go for a moonlight shadow. You think you're going to get a free kill onto your page, and long behold, there's a monkey watching everything you're doing. Yeah, they, they just can't find that opening on SMG's side. They're trying to, right? Like they're trying to play around with the early timing of a tiny core. They want to play with a burst on avalanche toss. They want the big red flicks to come in with tree grab. The Timps is just ruining everything, and boom, while all of that happens up top, they've got a very free lane bot for Palos. He's got the Ags up with that Crystalis timing, the usual buildup we see from Palos on this gyro. Tier 2 bot not going to last for long, and now you're losing more map control for MSMG. You're, you're not going to have access to bot for farm, you lose your outpost, you lose some XP per minute. SMG still needs to hit item spikes. I mean, they still need the Echo Saber for mid one. He's going back for it after the blink. Ideally, I think at this point, you'd be towards that Silver Edge. You know, with the blink up, you want the Silver Edge up ASAP for right click speed and for the crit. And that's going to be a bit longer while for SMG. And that's just going to delay their physical burst output by so much. Even KP on the Venge, his Ags isn't up yet. And we talked about like a 15 minute timing for him. It's like three minutes off the usual from KP Smoothest Games, and Boom has just managed to put a big wrench into that game plan of SMG with their item timings. I mean, he's 0 6 2 right now on that Vengeful Dyer's Spirit, so top it's top been top a very top. rough time for KP. Luckily for him, he's about 990 gold away now from finishing that Aghanim Scepter off, but like, like you said, I mean, the timings haven't been hit the way you'd like to see it hit if you're an SMG fan. And Boom Esports, they're very well aware of this. They're going to keep going with a big smoke up now. They'll leave your Pash behind. Goers 4, through that Radiant Triangle, we'll see who they end up finding. They've got a primary t target up at that top lane, mid one. He's going to TP out at the right time though. It seems very important right now for SMG not to get caught with their pants down, but they made just as... Well, the high ground is there, boom, CTM, he's going to go on with the Soulbind. Palos has got the homing missiles out, and now the Boundless Strike, again connecting on two. They found Arfu. He, he's just everywhere. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Tim's, he's a real menace this game. He's setting up everything for his team. I don't know what SMG can do about it at this point. I, I think next time around, they've got the Bandus Monkey King. It's basically a map hack for Boom Mike. It's like they've got cheats on or something. They know everything that happens. There's just no opening for SMG. They go into the Roche because you've got a Crystalis Gyrocopter. This doesn't take too long. And there's that Alacrity. So attack speed, not an issue for Palos. Rips right through. SMG, that was supposed to be the blink reveal on their shaker. That was what they were saving up for in the pause for there. Mid one. Gonna run to CTM, but can't actually get the kill with the shadow combo. Still with the tree throw, he will eventually get it done. But SMG, they won't mind. They just want this Roshan down. So CTM, he's gonna buy back to ensure they can take this fight if need be. But it does seem like, boom, they've already got it down. In fact, KB, he swapped in FBZ, but it's not going to matter too much because now he'll turn right onto him. Arrow's there, though, and they have taken down the Night Stalker, but can they find more? It does seem like they need to retreat right down now as Palos, he'll keep rushing forward with the flat cannon, but it won't matter. They won't have the lockdown. So they do force a buyback out of CTM. They'll get the death onto FBZ. That's about as good as it's going to get for SMG for now. And that's, that's probably the best exchange we've seen from SMG throughout this entire game as well, Mike. Like, they managed to get a little bit more. Not everything they want, though. Aegis still goes away of Boom, so, you know, you're, you're gonna have to deal with two lives on Palos. But, they still have this Blink to use on Hafu. They haven't shown off the Blink Slam yet. They just need to find the angle, but they have to do something about this Monkey King. Every single time, it's like we're a broken record now, but it really is off the back of Tim's. I, maybe it's down to KP using the Wave of Terror to scout the tree line instead of just hitting creeps with the Wave of Terror instead. Like, you do have to get the information out to ensure this Monkey King's never on your tail when you do want to go for a play now. Oh, absolutely. I'm just having a, a cheeky gander at Moon here, John. Speaking of Aghanim Scepters, Moon does have one of the Mirana. Uh, the arrow with the Starfall upgrade, I mean, it, it is a lot of damage flying out from Moon, and as you do get the levels up and you get those talents going, the, uh, the damage output of Starfall does start to get pretty darn insane. Do you think it's game-changing, though, for SMG? Like, do you think this is the itemization Moon needed to feel really impactful this game? It's not quite it yet. I think the core Mirana needs 
a few more things under its belt. The, the big thing that the Ags on Mirana does, it makes farming for Mirana a lot faster. So you get the arrow out, you can clear a creep wave basically with your entire spell kit, and that does speed up the process of getting more up. It looks like Moon is going to want the BKB next. So once you have that magic protection, you're not going to be worried about silence, you're not going to be worried about being jumped, and then you can try to leverage your damage out. You could try to leverage out the leap attack speed, you could try to get some damage through, but it, it's a game of patience for SMG. They just have to avoid boom as much as possible, and they are. They give out their top tier one, they're trying to make a move on that bot tier one exchange, and they find it. It still does favor boom in the end, as they take control of the triangle. But you're not giving more openings for Boom to abuse here. You certainly are not. Another Moonlight Shadow here from SMG. Seems like they want to try and invade that Dire Triangle, but they're not 100% sure who's around. And speaking of the Devils, Boom Esports, they're going to make their way over now. They know that SMG are around here somewhere down at that belt lane. In fact, Moon is going to reveal himself. He's going to try and TP out in time. It looks like he should be fine. However, Roggy is not. He does get caught out by Yopage and will end up dropping. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Palos, he's forced the BKB up and trying to run. Buyback is there, Roger. They want to try and force the fight. But it's going to amount to nothing. The buyback committed, but they didn't have the lockdown. Yeah, they couldn't find the angle. And SMG, well, they're a buyback short. 4k behind, 5 to 19. Boom. Palos. Still got that Aegis and Palos. Is he baiting right now? I think he might be. Dark Ascension's there. BZ's gonna rush in. They already got CTM down, but can they keep forcing this? The Echo, it's not gonna be there. The Crippling Fear was out too quick. FBZ, he goes for more now. Onto the remnant of KP. The last thing left standing. Moon, he'll try to rush in though with the arrow on Starfall and does take him out. A decent trade so far for SMG. And that's gonna be enough. Boom, they won't go too much further. Two for three trades so far. In fact, never mind, Palos, he's gonna go back in. He's still got that Aegis up. And BKB's back up in 10. In fact, they'll fight a double damage rune for Yopage. But it does appear that's gonna be enough. And that is kind of wasting the, the buyback committed there from Afu. However, SMG now are gonna smoke up. So they're, they're kind of all in on making sure that Afu's buyback is for, is for something rather than nothing. They're going to find a great target. Palos mid lane. Immediately going to lose that Aegis. They find him a second time though. Palos does have the BKB for this life. He's going to try and go for a run. In fact, Tims, he's going to jump in. KP once again going to be initially targeted. He's right back to the graveyard. Arrow though is going to be there. Big echo from Arthur, but is it enough? The fight back is there. Soulbind down, but no Palos. He's down. They've got Arthur at least. Mid one. He's trapped up. They've got Moon down as well, but can they keep it going? Moon, mid one. He's going to try and run. The Spirit Vessel not going to allow him to blink away, and it looks like Tim's is going to get the vision. So in the end, you lose Palos, but you still end up cleaning out. You know what's funny here, Mike, as well? Normally when we talk about Boom, right? Like, especially with the old Boom lineup, we used to talk about FBZ setting the pace. Tim's is pretty much that next core now. Like, FBZ on Night Soccer, he's been doing good work on the hero, getting good jumps. Look at the level difference between that support and the offlane. <laughs> Tim's is 17, <laughs> FBZ is 15. You know, it's like, Tim's is barely behind FBZ in farm, despite being a support. Like, this man is just going crazy on this Monkey King, and even if they lost Palos, that's not a win for SMG. They, they had to go all in, they had to use that Echo Slam, not gonna get it for the next fight now. KP, he got a bit greedy with that Wave of Terror, and he might end up paying for it now. Moonlight Shadow's out, he's still stuck in the Wukong's command, the swap is there, he's gonna try and force a fight. It's not gonna be enough though. He only had Moon behind him. He'll try for another swap out, but Tim's has a BKB up. <laughs> you aren't wrong, John. He he literally is another core now. In fact, I was having a look at the uh, the the XP board, and Tim's is third on the map. He's just a madman. He's just gotten so much. He's he's using this map hack the most effective we've seen so far. Like we we used to talk about Q's Monkey King a lot. I think Tim's is just on a different level. He has just done so much work. He's going for the Basher next, which is something you never see on your support monkeys because they can never get the farm, but why not? He, he's getting the lanes for himself. He's getting the gold up. Once that Basher is up, even the BKBs on SMG is not going to save them from the onslaught that the Monkey King will bring out. He's got more net worth than KP. He's almost got more net worth than FBC. He just needs about 1k. It's just uh, 
just doesn't seem right to me, John, that a POS4 can do this. Still SMG. Top lane, they might find your Yopash or Yopash might find them. He'll spot out Moon. Afu's around, understanding something may be awry, but Yopash, he does spot him out. They know the blink's down now, so Moon, he's a bit of a sitting duck. He'll use pretty much all his leap charges to try and run away. Tim's no balance strike up yet, just needs about one second before he can stun up Moon, and he does get him. And now FBZ can ensure he can get the job done, but KP's gonna swap him out, try to help out for the Soulbind. Gonna catch both of them. Now with the double silence out and the Primal Spring in. They've got Moon down on the Mirana, and they've got an extra consolation prize in the form of KP. He will be the second to fall, and Tim's is now godlike. As mid one, he's trying to catch somebody on this tiny. It's just not working out though. Maybe CTM? Maybe? Inkswell's there, CTM knows. Moon, mid one, Silence is out, BKB's there, he's gonna at least find a support. And that'll be enough. Yeah, it's, it's not a great feeling for SMG. Like, you find something. It's not a big kill by any means. Like, the, the Grimstroke's bottom net worth. You're not getting much of a rubber band effect. It is an important kill. But Boom still have complete control of these engagements, complete control of the map. 9k lead still remains for Boom. They've got the Satanic running now on Palos. So your gyrocopter is just this big issue you can't deal with. He has a DD and he's going Roshan. How is that fair? Happens every time, though. Again. You know? they, 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 exactly. Again, John. These double damage runes are just a given now. I think it was a shadow patch we didn't get to see. These uh, these DD runes in front of the Roche pit as it respawns. And here we go. It, Roshan's not going to take very long with that. Of course, DD also affects Flat Cat, so always helps to, to have that extra value there with, with Palos and the Gyro. And they'll give the shard over to Yopash. So now you've got triple meatballs out of the sky. Literally raining meatballs. Here for your Paj, and it's like, what, what do you do now if you're SMG? Like you, you're 10k behind, you're an Aegis down, you've got a now, now a really dangerous shards up on this Invoker. W what's the game plan, John? What did the Radiant do to try and pull their way back into this game one? They're, they're banking entirely on mid one now, Mike. They, they need this tiny to hit that Silver Edge timing, they need the crits to start coming through, they need more attack speed on mid one after the fact as well, but they have to just somehow spot out Tim's or just. You know, always be aware the monkey's not going to stop tracking them. You have to use the wave oh, of terror. Swap for that. in. They're going to try and go on your Yopash, but he has the BKB up, and the Wukong's command is there from Tim's. And KP. Oh, it's not a very tasty meatball for him. He'll get caught out. They'll try to turn. In fact, no, they're just going to try and run because Palos is on the chase. Mid one. He is spotted. Primal Spring is there. He's going to try and turn onto Tim's, but Tim's, he's got his own BKB up, so he'll just chase them down. No fear in the world for this Monkey King. Is they'll go in for more. It looks like they'll have to suffice with the remnant of KP. Meanwhile, on the backside, Tim's finally gets caught out. Afu, he'll commit the echo to make sure they get the kill. Moon, meanwhile, he'll try to deal with this invoker. Yopaj, he's going to turn back around. Meanwhile, on the other side, mid one. He's been caught out. Arrow on target from Moon, but does he have the damage? He does. And I suppose trading that life for his own is kind of worth with the way this game's gone. But it does seem like he is going to have to die for the cause. And it does still, in the end, seem very favorable for Boom Esports. I, I think the Tim's big was actually bigger than the Yopaj kill there, Mike. Like, that streak was massive in Tim's. I guess no, more than 9 kill streak, 758 gold just for that pickoff. And SMG is starting to find something. They're still losing a lot of their map down, but Palace could be a bit too forward here without the rest of his team behind him. Satanic, BKB, Aegis up. He seems to be confident enough, at least for now, to go after that tier 3 tower with the siege creep. In the end, Roji and KP, with the presence of Afu, are going to be intimidating enough to force back Palos. But I say that, they are chasing him down. Stuns out, KP, looking to get in range for a swap, perhaps, and does get it off, but Palos pops the Satanic, is still healing with the side gunner. A lot of perma stunts here from Arfu, but it's still not going to be enough as now KB. He gets jumped on again. They've got more help incoming in the form of mid one for Palos. He's still just man fighting. Eventually they'll get the avalanche toss out. And that'll be enough to at least take down the Aegis. It's, it's a good Aegis take 
you know, they don't use their big spells. They still have Slam coming in 20, so they could maybe just wait that out and reapproach that fight without the Aegis to protect. Oh, they found Tim's. Swap out Tim's. He's going to BKB Wukong's. And they actually don't know if the team's behind him. They, they can't fight him. In fact, FBZ, he's going to blink in with the Dark Ascension now. Crippling Fear out right onto mid one. They'd love to start with this tiny mid one. He's going very, very deep. He'll pop his own BKB after CTM and he will get the gyro. Rather the Grimstroke as the gyro gets tossed around. Palos still trying to move in, but now Tim's is down. They've got the Monkey King. But can they keep mid one alive here on the tiny? The answer's going to be no. They've lost mid one. Roggy, he's going to go down to the Sunstrike Yopage. Right on target. And it seemed like a great start to the fight, but in the end, Boom Esports, they still come out on top. But have they found another? Cold Snap is there, KP. He's going to try, but he just can't survive. Oh. Echo's out. They've at least got the Gyrocopter locked down, Afu. He'll set up for a great pickup. Onto Yopage now. They found another. And that's what you want to see here from SMG. You need those. You need to find those mistakes here from Boom Esports and capitalize, and that's exactly what they just do. They manage to hold off the high ground push from Boom. They get the punishment they're looking for on the gyrocopter and the invoker, all off the back of KP throwing his body for it. Like he baits them in to find that kill. He uses the illusion to swap in to look for more opportunities, and it goes from there. Uh, Boom has to be a bit careful about approaching specifically the Venge. If they see a tasty Venge kill. You have to be aware. Two lives on that bench, swaps law in hand. They can be forced in a rather awkward position if they're not careful. Issue for SMG is, with those kills, they can't really do much on the map. They can't really get a tower out, they can't really retake map control. So it's only equalizing their net worth somewhat. But boom, you know, they still have control. They just need to not give kills away like that, which is easier said than done. I think Tim's starting to see him fall a bit behind now in terms of... Uh, being up front as the Monkey King still has a lot of impact, but SMG is finally focusing on the Monkey King first, using their Wave of Terror to scout out. And if Tim's gets caught out, that usually breaks the engagement for Boom. Scary times ahead as well, John. Like you look at Moon now, and that Murana, he's he's queued up that Daedalus, and while the the attack speed on Leap isn't quite as good as it used to be, it is still a lot of damage when you've got a crit stick on your Murana. That's exactly what Moon is going for right now. The Dark Ascension's out, FBZ, he's gonna try and find something. It looks like he does find the Keeper, Roggy, trying to survive with the Lotus Orb up, but FBZ eventually is gonna get the job done. However, in the backside, they found Yopage. So mid one, able to take down the Invoker, and you'd have to argue that's very worthwhile for SMG. They get the punishment again, and boom, it feels like they're starting to maybe just feel pressured to play faster. Maybe they're worried about dropping a bit too much Yopage getting caught out is really not ideal. That, and with SMG with her lineup back up, they can actually look for a push now. Maybe look to force out the buybacks as well if they're not careful on Boom's end. Bot lane, they know FBZ's around, but just immediately gonna run to the tree line and TP up. Suddenly that net worth lead now down to 8k. SMG forcing a lot of great errors here from Boom Esports. And slowly making a comeback. And it should be noted, I mean, they've got some pretty massive power spikes once you get into that later stage of the game. A tiny, one of those great scaling pos ones right now is Palos, he's going to be swapped out. KP, going to force out the BKB immediately from Palos. Tims, he's going to show up. They know he's around there somewhere, in fact, mid one. Trying to predict where he jumps, but does barely miss out on finding the monkey. Still without the BKB up, they might be able to force high ground. They're shoving the wave, they force the fortify, they have another wave coming in. Yopage is up in a few seconds though. So the high ground defense for Boom, it, it's in there. They've got the Wukongs to play with, they've got all the spells from the Voker. They will go for a smoke play, looking for a wraparound here. Be dangerous. Die Triangle already kind of occupied here by SMG, but they are just about to leave the area. In fact, KB has already been jumped. Some strike in, but mid one. He's there with the avalanche. Look at the cleave damage out. FBZ, he's multing right on the Night Stalker. They've got one down, but FBZ will buy back as Tim's. He'll move in, takes down KB, and even finds mid one. You can always rely on Tim's to get it done. They found Moon on the Marana, and now they'll go after Roggy. 
And there's not much hope here for Rodgy as Timms is on the chase with the Bowler strikeout. He's going to try and heal himself up, but it's not going to be enough. A triple kill out for the Monkey King. And this man, he, he does it again every single time throughout this game one. Every time it looks a little bit dark for Boom Esports, Timms brings it back. He really just swings attack the way of Boom. Really just setting up, forcing the buy back now on SMG as their high ground's completely open. No outer towers left. Boom, they could look to shove in a bit. Roshan not too far off from the respawn. So if they don't feel secure, they could just go back for Roshan number three and build off there once more, but the racks just melts. Palos standing up there with Alacrity, it's just too much. It, the, the objectives won't last too long at all. No, absolutely not. That's uh, one rack gone, mid lane. They'll go down to the bottom instead now. Keep in mind, there's no outer towers left standing here for SMG, so they could go all the way for Megas if they're feeling spicy, but the jump in. Echo slams there with the toss out for Palos. He's going to survive through it. Can he get a Satanic off? No, it was on cooldown. It was on cooldown, but now you have is in with the Chaos Meteors, but it's not going to be enough. They might find another, and they do. Mid one, able to find the kills, is now the jump back in, FBZ, he's found Arfu and they found KP, it'll be two down, but now SMG, they might be able to counter initiate, as FBZ gets swapped in once again by KP. Find a third. Not the most, oh, oh Tims, maybe a fourth. We're trying to find his way out, and it looks like he should be just fine. The end losing one lane of barracks, John, but they do protect the other two and they find a great set of kills for themselves here on SMG. It's just Boom again, just being a bit too aggressive, not respecting the output of SMG, overstepping their bounds a bit. That's a really preemptive satanic use from Palos when he went down to the bot racks. He turned it on immediately, he wasn't that low on HP, and that cooldown cost him. If he had the satanic as he was being jumped, as you pointed out, he would have lived through Mike. So. Small mistakes from Boom being punished. Roshan is up, so this is a really good turnaround for SMG. With this Rosh, with a refresh, with the cheese and Aegis, they could look to go high ground once more, pressure something out. Not sure what the refresh is going to be really good for. They don't have the best refresh heroes on hand, but maybe even just double avalanche toss could make a massive difference in damage output and control here. I thought maybe they'd go for the double echo on our foos. You've seen the, the damage output he can make happen with that big echo slam, but... Well, at least for now, you are correct, John. They do give it over to mid one. Maybe he just holds on to it for now. We'll have to wait and see. And suddenly, Boom Esports, not necessarily backs against the wall here, but it, it is certainly looking a lot more dangerous for them. Is SMG, they're going to try and force a high ground attempt. 23 seconds left for FBZ. They swap in Palos. They've got the gyrocopter. And they'll force out the BKB. Perhaps now... With the Daedalus up on Moon, you have a pretty massive damage influx coming in. You might be able to force this Rax. And without the BKB up on Palos, I'm not really sure if he can force a fight. I think the answer might be no. We'll see though, because FBZ has respawned now on the Night Stalker. They are going to pop the Dark Ascension. They'll move in from the backside onto KP. They'll get rid of that Vengeful Spirit immediately. Back in on mid one now. Tims, he's bashing within that Wukong's command. But mid one, he gets out. But look at the damage output. Rocket Barrage is there. They've got the first life, but they've lost Tims on the Monkey. He'll commit a buyback immediately. He's now the Chaos Meteors and the Cataclysm going to fly in. But the damage is negligible. It's not really that high. And in the end, SMG, they're going to try and back out. And it looks like they're going to be just, just fine. They do find the melee barracks in the end, and that'll be enough for them. It's a start. They've got one lane that's going to shove in now. They force the buyback in Tim's. The net worth has dragged down. It's about 3k of a difference for Boom and lead. Mike and SMG is starting to reel back this game a bit. They can't quite go for side lanes. Tier 2s are still up, so progressing, progressing further into the high ground is going to be a bit slower than they'd want. And losing the Aegis does put a dent and what mid one would want to do. He's, he doesn't have that safety net anymore. Do you still have cheese hanging there on Moon at the least? And they could pass that off to the Tiny if they feel the need. But you're reaching the point where the Tiny is getting a bit big. He's got 3.8k HP. Uh, he has 31 armor on hand with Grow. Really just maybe freeing up a slot, like consume the Moon Shard, work towards, say, an Assault Curus, then you'd be really good to hold your own.
against the physical output of the gyrocopter. It's just going to tickle you against all that physical resist, uh, physical uh, resist you have with your armor and your EHP. The side of Boom now, hmm, it they're set back a bit. They could still keep applying pressure on bot, but no tier three. Someone has to show up, to prevent that split push, and they are playing around a bot jungle. They are smoking up though, looking for that rotation, perhaps towards up top where their tier two already fell. But they are. Boom. Oh, they might run into Moon. That's a massive target if they could get it. And Moon is a, a pretty big source of damage right now. However, the top lane of Tier 3 Tower is going down. Moon, he has been caught out, but he's got the BKB up. He's just going to try and leap and run his way out. He still has two leap charges, so he should be able to buy a bit more time. As now the swap's there. KB, he's going to give him a bit more space to try and back him his way out. But no, the Sun Strike is going to fly him. But no, the Cheese, he gets it off in time. As now mid one, he'll move in. FBZ, he is going to drop. That was a die back on the Night Stalker. Back in with the Wukong's command, though, but nobody's trapped inside of it. Ah, uh, Fu and Roji going to try and back, but now the meatballs come out of the sky. They've got the Keeper of the Light down, but can they find more? Roji, he'll buy back. Yopaj is down on the Invoker. He can commit his own buyback if he wants to. He might need to, in fact, as Palos may get caught. And there's your Magic Missile out. KP, he'll lock him down for a second. He has the swap up as well. We'll swap him back in into the Avalanche Toss oh. now. But you've got the Cataclysm. It's not going to be enough, though. In fact, Tims, he's been caught off the back line. Two heroes down with our buyback. And SMG, they might be able to find another lane of barracks. In fact, as I'm asked the question, John, they've already got it down. And they're going for tier 4 towers. Look at this tiny damage. Oh, man. It's just ridiculous. The bait play for Moon. It's just Palos. way too much, although. Yeah, he's been swapped in. He's going to try and force the fight. With the BKBs up on SMG, he can't do too much. In fact, now mid one, back in. Arrow's oh, there. God. They lock him down and take him out. That's a die back, and it seems like Boom Esports, they are at the end of the road for this game one, as SMG have made a great comeback, although maybe not mid one. He does end up dropping, but does it matter? Arthur's still around with Moon. They've got the last piece of the puzzle, and that's GG. So, uh, from a game where Boom Esports, John, they were, what, 96, 97% probability of winning this game. SMG managed to bring it back in the late game. And what a comeback it was. I can't believe it. Like, Boom had such an amazing start. Tim's was basically another core. They were hitting all their time on Palos, on Yopaj. And they just made a couple of slip-ups. I think the big one was the one that led into the Roshan. So they overextend on high ground. Palace pops the Satanic a bit too early, doesn't have that up for when the fight actually broke out and didn't have that flash healing on hand. And the last bit was when Moon was forcing them to chase him around. No one was there to defend top. Mm. It was only Yopash, it's Invoker, I think, holding off that top push. And they just managed to take the racks. They split the fights into two parts. KP gets the swap saves. They play it perfectly. They find these mistakes from Boom and blow them wide open. And Boom, maybe they felt a bit overconfident. You know what I feel like I'm seeing here, Mike? It reminds me of uh, the old Boom esports. You know, the, the <laughs> old issues we used to see from Boom that Dream Cell would talk about sometimes. They got a bit keen on Boom's side and you get punished. It's Dota 2. Anything can happen. Even when you have a good lead, it can all disappear in one snap. Yeah, and I think SMG are one of those teams that are very good at forcing errors from the other team. And it's kind of like you pointed out, John, just pushing out that top lane, forcing the rotation over. Uh, maybe they could kill Moon, but a great swap out from KP into the cheese play. Just fantastic from SMG. And sometimes it's only one play that does it for you. Of course, with that, we are going to head to a very short break. And right after that break, we are going to be back with our second game of this best of three upper bracket final. See you then.